Hello and welcome back to Batch Reviews. Now today I'm looking around this. It's the new Volkswagen ID4. It's a pure electric SUV and this video is going to be a little bit different from my normal ones because it's not going to be like a normal review. This time round I'm going to be giving you a full walk around the car, getting inside it, talking about everything you need to know about it and then we're going to take it for a little test drive. It's more like a real world review really but before we dive into that make sure you give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment if you've got any questions about the car and please do subscribe to the channel. Your support means a huge amount. Anyway, right, let's dive into the video. Okay, so this is it then, the ID4, and it won't take a brain surgeon to work out. This follows the ID3, which was launched last year in 2020. That car was very much the size of a Golf. This is more like the size of a Volkswagen Tiguan SUV. And just like the ID3, it's got that very short front overhang. And that's because this car sits on VW's new um, MEB platform, it's bespoke electric car platform, and because there's no engine under the bonnet, it means you don't have to have a, a long front overhang. So it gives this car a bit of a, a squat appearance at the front. Um, let me know what you think to it. I think it works better on the ID4 than it does on the ID3. The ID3 looks as though it's been sort of involved in an accident, um, but the ID4 looks just a little bit better proportioned, I think, with this new platform. Um, so, in terms of styling, this is an SUV. There's going to be an ID5 coming along later in 2021, and that's pretty much this car with a more coupe-like roofline. I happen to think this looks pretty good, actually. I think it's got a bit of an estate car, sort of a high-riding estate car look to it. I mean, VW's designers have been pretty clever because the side of the car actually is quite bulky, but because of that uh, plastic that runs along the bottom of the doors, the metalwork is actually quite thin and it gives this car a much more of a thinner profile than it actually has. A trick of the designer there, nice flush fitting door handles as well, which is pretty nice. They don't pop out like they do on a Jaguar I-Pace, they just remain fixed. Um, now at the back, let's just walk around the back because we haven't shown, haven't shown you the back. Now, as is the way with, well, seemingly every electric car these days, there's a LED light strip that goes all the way around the back. Of course, we've got the new VW badging and the ID4 badging there. And because this car's white, that ID4 badge is white. If you had a yellow car, it would be white. Um, and yeah, it gives this car a bit of a distinctive look at the back, but as, well, like I've already said, most, a lot of electric cars have got these LED strips now. So before too long, every car's gonna look the same. But again, like I said earlier on, I think this car's got quite a good look to it, actually. But yeah, I happen to think it looks pretty good. Now this car has got um, a silver kind of segment that goes across the top of the car. Lower spec cars uh, are in sort of a black color. It's uh, uh, it's only these high-spec cars that have got a bit of a um, sort of a contrasting colour to them. Um, right, let's talk about batteries because there's quite a bit to talk about. Now, um, there are three different batteries and motor sizes. The Pure car, that's the entry-level ID4, ID4 Pure, that gets a 52 kilowatt hour battery, 148 horsepower electric motor to the rear wheels, and there's a range of 213 miles, 213 miles. Then there's the pure performance, which is essentially the pure, but as you guessed it, with a bit more performance. So you get the same 52 kilowatt hour battery. Um, this time round, you get 170 horsepower electric motor to the back wheels. And the range is the same, 213. And then sitting right at the top, is the Pro Performance. Now that gets a 77 kilowatt hour battery, a 204 horsepower electric motor to the rear wheels. And the range on this car is 322 miles. Now coming later in 
2021 is a GTX version. It's, uh, well, how can I put this? It's sort of an electric version of the Volkswagen GTI, really. It's the electrified GTI. It's probably the best way of describing it. VW are launching this new sub-brand, first of all, with the ID4. Now that gets the same 204 horsepower um, electric motor uh, at the back, like this car, but at the front, powering the front axle, there's another secondary um, electric motor. So total horsepower on that is just under 300. And of course, it gets four wheel drive. Now, along with the three battery and motor sizes, you get four trim levels for the time being. That is, of course, until the GTX arrives. But for now, the basic ID4 comes in lifestyle, family and max. Um, but you only get the best range on the entry level life because of its smaller wheels, etc. So, for instance, the pure 52 kilowatt hour car, um, the range on that is 213. But if you go for the style, that drops by two miles to 211. Not much, I hear you say, but it's worse if you go for the 77 kilowatt hour car. For instance, the uh, life, entry level life, pro performance 77 kilowatt hour um, car has a range of 322. If you go for the top spec max trim level, that now drops to 316. Now prices range from 34,595 for the entry level uh, smaller battery life version. That means that this car does just creep into the government subsidy of uh, two and a half thousand pounds, but the rest of the range, you don't get a subsidy at all, um, especially on the top spec car because it, it, uh, it tops out at a whopping 50 thousand pounds. Now this car uh, is not representative of any trim level at the moment you can buy because this car as you can tell from the badge here is a first edition. Unsurprisingly it's a first edition so it's a uh, well-equipped special launch edition car. It was pretty well priced actually. Um, if you went for this car first, um, if you uh, you know, splashed out first before all the other customers, VW rewarded you because you've got a high level of equipment. It sort of sits between um, a style and a max, but it only, I say only, it only costs just under 41,000 pounds. And the only real difference exterior wise to this and the top spec match, uh, max edition are the first edition badges. You get 20 inch wheels on this car. The max only gets 19s um, and at the front, you just get conventional LED day running lights here. Um, but the top spec cars, the Max, the, you get a LED strip that runs all the way along the front of the car, much like you find on the top spec ID3 as well. This first edition doesn't get that, but it's hardly uh, a big deal, really. Um, now, what else? Well, charging. I mean, this is crucial, really, isn't it? Now, every single ID4 gets a um, 7.2 kilowatt uh, phase one and 11 kilowatt three phase charging. And the ID4 can also charge up to 125 kilowatts DC charging as well, which is very good if you need to get um, a rapid charge uh, when you're out on the move. Let's have a look in the charging flat. Now it's here. Open that. So yeah, there you go. You get your Type 2 charger there, suitable for your home wall box, and then you just flick that off. And now that's uh, suitable for CCS charging. So that is your uh, rapid chargers on the move. If you connect this car up to a three pin domestic socket, it'll take you 36 hours, but let's face it, that's not the way most people are going to charge. They'll charge probably with a seven kilowatt home wall box, and that means that takes 12 hours. Um, and then uh, if you are able to connect to a 22 kilowatt um, on street charger, that will be eight hours. As for rapid charging, if you find a 50 kilowatt um, charger on the street, a 20 to 80% charge will take 60 minutes. And if you're lucky enough to find a 150 kilowatt um, charger, rapid charger, Again, a 20 to 80% charge will take 30 minutes. Um, now let's just check out those charging cables because um, we'll just open the boot. Now you don't get an electric tailgate on this car, 
which I'm absolutely fine with because I hate them, but some people may be surprised for a car that costs nearly £50,000 you don't get um, electric tailgate. But anyway, the boot is absolutely massive actually, even though there's an electric motor at the bottom of this car underneath, there is still plenty of room. Now under here is where you can store your charging cables. Now the Type 2 comes as standard with this car, but if you want to have a three pin, so if you want to be able to, well, a granny cable, so to speak, if you want to have the option to uh, have a three pin, perhaps if you're visiting friends, because you know for a fact they don't have a home wall box, VW charge you extra for that. They charge you £180, which I happen to think is a little bit stingy, but there we are. So plenty of storage in there, which is pretty good. There's um, some tools there. Um, and there's a first aid kit in there. So yeah, it's been well thought about and that is again That is the advantage of having a bespoke electric car platform is that things like this can be thought about right then Let's hop inside and uh, let me show you around Okay, so this is the interior on the new ID4 Unsurprisingly, it's a near carbon copy of the interior you find on the ID3 But this time round there are a few nicer plastics on top of the dash and on the doors um, but I still wouldn't say this is an interior that's sort of befitting of a car that's 40 to 50 thousand pounds there are a few too many scratchy plastics in here but you know having said that it's good enough um, one little difference from the ID3 is the uh, light switch the light panel down here for the lights and for the uh, heated windscreen uh, heated rear window etc. Um, on the ID3 it's positioned in a really awkward place it's uh, over here but this time round it's in a far more logical place. Now every single ID4 gets a 10 inch touch screen here um, it comes with sat nav, uh, Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay. There's also gesture control so you can slide between stuff if you really do want to. Um, but much like the um, much like the VW Golf Mark 8 and the ID3, this new VW infotainment system really isn't the best system uh, to use. Um, it's uh, it's a far cry from the simplicity of the uh, previous Golf Mark 7.5, which is a shame really, because that system was really easy to use. This one I find is a bit clunky. Um, it's a bit slow to respond. Um, I find some of the controls are a little bit all over the place. And there are a row of touch sensitive controls here. The middle ones, that's for your volume. And then on the left and right, that is the um, air conditioning controls. And again, I mean, I just find it, you know, this, these touch sensitive things are just a bit of a gimmick, really. I much prefer a couple of dials, a couple of knobs. Um, below that, you've got your um, uh, parking menu uh, You've got your climate control and you've got the safety systems and the drive mode select. Um, now, uh, the ID4 also gets this, um, well, the same way the ID3 does, but this instrument binnacle is, well, this little screen is attached to the steering column. So it means that when you move the steering wheel up and down for your driving position, that always stays in the same place, which is really good. You've got your uh, gear selector on the end. You twist that twist it that way for drive and for B mode, which is extra brake regeneration, and you you uh, switch it downwards for reverse. And uh, park is on the end there. Um, now this is the new style of VW steering wheel. These aren't individual buttons. They're sort of like haptic feedback, touch sensitive buttons. Um, so you can. Uh, if you can hear that, but you sort of the whole thing moves when you when you press it um, and it sort of vibrates a little bit. Um, again, I find it a little bit gimmicky. I much prefer a set of buttons like you found on uh, older style VW steering wheels. Um, but I suppose it's nice and modern, isn't it? Um, now, because this is this car is built on a bespoke electric car platform, it means that VW has been able to be clever with all the space. So all the heating and ventilation controls are up front, they're under the bonnet, which frees up a lot of space in here. Um, so it's, it feels very light and very airy in here. Um, now here, you've got um, a couple of cup holders. This is also where you can put the key so the, the car recognises it. You can also remove this if you want to, um, to have a larger 
uh, storage space. Um, now, because there's no sort of transmission tunnel, because there's, of course, there's no conventional gearbox and no sort of prop shaft to the rear wheels, it means that all of this area here is devoted to storage. You slide that back. You've got a couple of movable dividers, so you can split this uh, section up to how you want it to. Uh, USB-C uh, charging ports. I mean, if you've your phone and devices rely upon USB A's. You can have to have a little connector like this one. And every single ID4 comes with a wireless charging pad as well, which is quite a nice touch. Because there's no because this area is devoted to storage, there's no armrest, so the seats get these sort of Range Rover style uh, armrests. The seats themselves are very comfortable. Um, this is a pretty standard uh, interior spec on this car, so this is sort of like a fake Alcantara suede material and uh, brown leather. Um, what else? Well, there is this car has got a bit of an annoying feature. The ID3 has got it as well. Um, now, on the armrest here, you will note there is only two buttons for the electric windows. So you're probably thinking, does this car only have electric windows in the front? No, it doesn't. It has electric windows in the back. But in order to operate those windows, you have to press this button here. And when you do that, I mean, it's not even a button. Again, it's a touch sensitive button. Then you've got uh, control of those. I mean, what is wrong with having four switches? Goodness only knows, really. Um, the other thing is uh, the pedals down here. Uh, play and pause. A bit of fun that. I quite like that. And there is a reason for that really because much like you find in a Tesla for example, when you get in this car, the car is already on. I mean I've simply gone into this car and the uh, dashboard and the infotainment system come on immediately and all you do is press your foot on the pause button and then the car is ready to go and you just pop it into gear and you drive away. You don't have to press a button to switch the ignition on. There is a button on the side of the steering column if you want to uh, switch the ignition on and off. But like I say, when you get in the car, it is ready to go. Um, now, the only other thing that I just want to talk about um, is the spec. Now, every single ID4 gets that touchscreen. It gets ambient lighting with 30 different colours. Um, you get adaptive cruise control, two-zone climate control, which is all very good. And you also get ID light. Now, you can't see it at the moment, um, but at the bottom of the windscreen is a little LED strip. And that gives you a variety of information. The, the nicest piece of information I find is when the car is connected to a charger. Um, let's say, for instance, you've got 25% battery left. The first 25% of that little light strip will be solid. It will be solid green. And the rest of the switch will sort of pulsate green to let you know the uh, battery is charging. A bit gimmicky, I suppose you could say, but I quite like it. Um, now, every single ID4 comes with a lot of equipment. Higher models, I mean, they do get... Um, uh, the top spec car gets augmented reality sat nav, which uh, sort of, well, not sat nav, sorry, augmented reality head up display, where uh, in the head up display you get augmented 3D kind of images, which is quite nice, I suppose. And the top spec car also gets a heat pump. Now, don't worry, that's not a heater. Every single ID3 comes with a heater, but the heat pump makes the car more efficient in the winter and because of course in the winter you're going to be using the climate control more to keep yourself warm it prevents the battery from getting drained top spec cars get it as standard across the rest of the range it is a 1250 pound option space in the back it is really good actually because of that electric car platform there is lots of leg room headroom is pretty good too and those seats are pretty comfortable isofix in both outer seats as well and you could fit three people back there because of course the floor is completely flat right enough of the chatter let's get this car out on the road just put my foot on the pause button and there we are the car is ready to go there we are this car makes all all sorts of funny noises especially when you get out the car it does this special kind of VW signature tune which all VW electric cars do these days but um, now let's talk about 
batteries. Now I've got the larger one here, the 77 kilowatt hour car. Um, now the claimed range is, well, like I've already said, over 300. On a full charge, and this is the summer that I'm filming this, I've I got on a full ch overnight charge from a seven kilowatt home wall box, I got 300 miles, which I think is pretty good actually. Of course, during the winter, you'd probably expect that to be around 230, something like that. And, um, and if you're driving, particularly on motorways, I would probably expect a realistic average to be around 200 miles. Uh, but I've been doing a mixture of A roads, B roads, um, city driving, and I found around 270 is a good average in the summer when it's fairly warm and the battery is not being depleted too much. Now VW claims the efficiency of the ID4 is around four miles per kilowatt hour. I haven't found it to be that high actually, I found it to be in the low to mid threes. Um, and in the low threes, that means that the Ford Mustang Mach-E, even the high performance versions, have a better efficiency than this. And also things like the Kia e Nero, the Kia Soul EV and the Hyundai Kona are actually a bit more efficient than this car. But like I say, early to mid threes isn't too bad, I suppose. Now, this car, this first edition car, has 20 inch wheels. I mean, the, the normal range, the rest of the ID4 range only comes with 19s, and I think the ride quality would be an awful lot better on 19s. On 20s, it just sort of bangs and crashes into potholes, just a little bit too much for my liking. And I think for a family SUV, the ride on these 20s isn't the best, actually. I think if you're switching from a VW you Tiguan into an ID4 with 20 inch wheels on, I think you'll be surprised at how firm the ride is. But like I say, 20s are only for this first edition. 19s are standard uh, on the other models and that would be a much better choice in my opinion. And the 20s also kick up quite a lot of road noise. The 19s wouldn't be quite so bad, which is a shame really because the ID4 actually is a pretty quiet electric car. Just because the car's electric doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be quiet. But VW have done quite a good job actually. There's very little wind noise, wind rustle. And like I say, apart from the apart from the tyre noise, it's a pretty hushed car to drive actually. Now the performance of this car, this is the 77 kilowatt hour car with that 200 brake horsepower electric motor. It's pretty good actually, 0 to 60 in around eight and a half seconds. It doesn't feel lightning fast. There are definitely faster versions of the Ford Mustang Mach-E for example, but it is quick enough, especially for a family SUV. You're never left feeling as though you need more power. It's a very easy car to drive. It feels very sophisticated and it feels quite a large car actually. And I don't mean large in the bad sense, I just mean large as in the fact it feels quite substantial. Now as I mentioned earlier, you can put this car into B mode. I mean you can do that in countless other electric cars, can't you? But unlike a lot of electric cars, you don't have paddles behind the steering wheel. You can't control the brake regeneration. B mode is your only way of ramping up the level of regen that you get. Now when you put the car into B mode, it does put the anchors on pretty well actually. I mean no way can you drive this car in one pedal mode like you can in a Nissan Leaf or a BMW i3 for example, but it's pretty good, especially around town. And it sums up the whole car really. It's just a very easy, easy to live with, smooth driving car this. Nothing fancy, but also nothing much to complain about either. A couple of other things to mention are the ID4 can tow loads of up to 750 kilograms brakes and a thousand kilograms unbraked. Now that's around half you'd get from a petrol or a diesel VW Tiguan, but it is better than many of its electric rivals, many of which aren't even homologated to tow. And the VW ID Connect app, which allows you to start and stop charging and remotely set the air conditioning, looks nice and it's pretty easy to use, but it is lacking some basic features like remote locking and unlocking and sending destinations to the car's sat-nav. 
But other than that, the ID4 is a good electric car. It's easy to drive and live with, and it's pretty well engineered. If you want your next family car to be an electric one, this car should be high on your shortlist.